will follow When you seek me, show me the way I will go I will go to the streets I will go to the lanes I will go where you lead I will go in Jesus' name I will take off my sin and shame Or I will answer just the same When Jesus calls out my name I will go I will go all the way I will go both night and day I will fix my case on Him As He cleanses me from sin I will answer when He calls Just to reach both great and small I will go, I will go, I will go In my home, lead me Lord I will go in my school teach me Lord I will go in my work send me Lord I will go in the market guide me I'll go I will go Wonderful Wednesday evening in the presence of the Lord. So welcome to the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus, online evangelistic series sponsored by the English speaking territories of the Inter-American Division of Seventh-day Adventists. And of course, broadcasting live from Montego Bay, Jamaica, I'm Denise Lawson Leslie. And I'm Alan Green. Good evening to everyone. And of course, adding to the welcome. We are so happy to have you from all the various platforms. Oh, yes. And, you know, Denise, how was your day today, if My I may ask? It was a blessing indeed. Yes, yes, a blessing. And I trust that you had a wonderful day today. Well, we have a beautiful young lady. She is definitely not a stranger here. She's from the Spice Island, and she's better than the best. <laughs> of course, she's none other than Nicole Best. Oh. How are you? Welcome. Good to see you again. I am very well. It's good to be with you guys once again, both Alan and Denise and all our friends, family, people that we know, people that we don't know across the Caribbean, around the world. It's right. just so good to be back with all of you, just awesome. worshiping God and learning from his, learning at his feet as his servant presents his word. And tonight, I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. Tonight, awesome. I want to remind you, before I throw back to, to Denise and Alan, I just want to remind you that you need to make sure and visit the VIP room. The minister, that's evangelist Glenn Samuels, he's going to be there along with his team. He's waiting to hear from you, so don't go anywhere. You stay right there, enjoy the message, take all the notes that you can take, and right after, go into the VIP room. Here's something else I'd like you to do. I'd like you to be a digital disciple. Call someone and tell that someone to tell someone to tell someone that we're on right here on Footprints of Hope. Additionally, I want you to share it. Whatever platform you're on, Facebook, 
hit the share button. You are on YouTube, share it. You're listening to it in your territories, on the radio, on television. Call someone, tell them, tune in. That's the least you can do to help us to spread God's word. And don't just do that. You just like and subscribe. Amen. Stay with us. There we go. That's Nicole Best. And we say good evening to all Grenadians. Am yes, I right? Indeed. There we go. Awesome. That's right. Well, we're going to go right now over we to the praise team. And they, of course, will be doing for us a song that we have been singing every evening. It yes, is our theme song. Theme song to the praise team. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Looking back in the past of centuries ago When you walked through the garden alone You left even then your footprints of hope To be followed by men down the road Adam and Eve, yes they walked the path But thought that they hopelessly found but you sent a savior four thousand years later so many young and old now can tell of your footprints, footprints of hope footprints of love footprints of Shall we pray? O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we are grateful and happy to know that you are our God. We are grateful and happy to know that you are the rock of our salvation. And we are grateful and happy that you have brought us on this platform whereby we can worship you, whereby we can honor you, whereby we can give you the honor and the glory that belongs to you. Tonight, in a very special way, we invite your Holy Spirit presence one more time to be with each worshiper, be with your manservant as you use him again to proclaim your words. We ask tonight, Lord, that you will cover him under your blood, that you will fill him up with your Holy Ghost powers, that you will hide him behind the cross. And, oh God, as you empower him tonight, may he speak your word boldly so that someone who has been halting between two opinions, someone who have not yet known you as Lord and Savior, will accept you as Lord and Savior before it is too late. They will surrender their all to you. They will get Get baptized this weekend and be ready to meet you in glory when you shall come is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes. And at this time, we just want to welcome everyone, right, Alan? That's right. That's to right. all our friends across the islands and the continents, Indeed. everywhere, anywhere you are viewing right now, we just want to welcome you. And uh, we just want to welcome all those in the Caribbean Union, the Caribbean territories. Uh, and let's see how best we can do this. Um, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Bar yes. Bridges Island, Vern Virgin Islands, rather, Dominica, Grenada, Cayman Islands, 
Guyana, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, U.S. Virgin Island and um, Saba and St. Eustace and St. Martins. Wow. Those are the Caribbean Union, Alan. Atlantic Caribbean Union, we welcome you. We're talking about Bahamas, Cayman Islands and the Turks and the Caicos Islands. Yes, Dutch Caribbean, Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao. All right, Belize Union, Belize. Belize and Jamaica, and Jamaica. The Jamaica Union, of we course. We want to welcome one and all. Put your flag in the chat right now because you are welcome. And if you're joining us from anywhere else across the world, we welcome you. And remember, be the minister of the gospel. Keep on sharing that link because we have a work to do. Welcome one and all to another Footprints uh, of Hope. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. We are going to be lifting our voices together, but tonight we're going to be doing it a little bit differently. As we prepare for the day when the church militant becomes the church triumphant, join us as we sing these beautiful hymns. Sound up as a cry, sing of the
Celebrations, liquids. Next to air, water is the most vital element needed for survival. Every day, intricate processes within your body use water to keep you alive. In fact, humans are about 70% water, which clearly shows that water does much more than just quench thirst. Studies show that water is the transport system within the body, the facilitator of digestion, a temperature regulator, a major constituent of the circulating blood, and a lot more. Clearly, water is the liquid of life, but how much water do we really need to stay hydrated and enjoy its benefits? In a healthy person, the rule of thumb is to consume enough throughout the day to ensure that the urine is clear. Begin your day by drinking water, because your body will be relatively dehydrated after sleeping. Then keep drinking water at regular intervals throughout the day. Staying hydrated is key to good health. Life couldn't exist without water. All your body functions require it. Water cleanses, refreshes, and powerfully aids your body's restoration. It's time to celebrate a healthy and a happier you in 2022. You are cordially invited to a historic graduation ceremony for all those who completed the Healthy and Happy Study Series on February 13th, 6 p.m. Miami time. Our special guest speaker will be Dr. Ellie Henry, president of the Inter-American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Make it a date to be part of this first ever regional ceremony by completing the lessons with your family and friends today. The Healthy and Happy Study Series graduation ceremony, proudly sponsored by Hope Beyond in conjunction with the Footprints of Hope Walking with Jesus online series. It's offering time. God is the greatest giver. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave. In the beginning, God gave us a perfect environment to live in. When sin entered the world, God gave us his son to save us. And every day, God keeps on blessing us over and over again. Tonight, when you think about the goodness of God over your life, I want you to express gratitude to him. One way in which you can do so is by giving. Tonight, there is a QR code on your screen. Just scan that code and it will lead you to our giving platform. At this time, I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we give now, we ask that you will bless our offering, bless the givers, and Lord, I pray that their offering will go towards the proclamation of the everlasting gospel. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, at this moment, I ask you to continue blessing the Footprints of Hope Gospel Campaign. I ask you to bless the pastor, to bless the people who are participating in the campaign, Lord. Bless the people who are watching. The, bless the five nations, the five unions. And Lord, I ask you to pour your Holy Spirit upon each and one of them, Lord. And I ask you to be with the people who are who will be newly baptized this Saturday. And for the people who who have not made this decision, Lord, I ask you to please be with them so I, they can make the decision, Lord. And uh, with the people who have been baptized, I ask you to be with them as well because 
Satan is not, he is not resting, Lord. He will do anything to do to take away one soul from you, Lord. I ask you to be with everyone. And also, Lord, I want to ask for the sick people because right now there is a lot of sickness in this world. And also the people who are in need of money because this world, nothing is easy right now. But with you, Lord, anything is possible. Uh, thank you for having me here, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity. And may you bless everyone, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Forgive us, Lord, forgive us, Lord, forgive us of our debt. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power and the glory forever. singing there of course and we praise the Lord and he's its church eh? Amen. and I yes. tell you the spirit of the Lord is in this place well if you're just joining us we just want to welcome you once again to the footprints of hope walking with Jesus it is a beautiful series and I'm telling you uh, all those who are listening in radio land we just want to welcome you to our worship service this evening those joining us via the various uh, conference you and Union YouTube and Facebook platforms we just want to welcome you of course and those on TV Cable Land 
And I tell you, Denny's, it's awesome here. Huh? It is, it is uh, indeed, uh, Alan. And if we have such a topic like this tonight, which says, can the love be true if the flowers are fake? Mercy. Now, Nicole, what, did you, what are you deducing from such a topic tonight? Well, I found it very interesting. And I, I, I sought to get a, an answer from my son. He's not an expert on that, but he, he seems to think that Yes, the love is real, even though the flowers might be fake. We're going to wait to hear from God's word on all of that. But, but you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about prayer. We cannot go through life without prayer. And I want to remind our friends that our prayer room is open. It opens at 5 in the morning until 6 daily. And then it opens again at 4 in the afternoon until nine at night. The numbers that you can call to get into, into the prayer room, it's on the screen. Take note of it and make use of it. We've got people praying for you all over this region. You want to pray for your families? Call the prayer room. You want prayer for your marriage, for your health, for persons who are struggling with the decision. And right now we know that there are people who are struggling with the decision to follow God. And prayers will help with that. When you call the prayer room, there's going to be somebody there to answer your questions, to pray with you and to pray for you. And I'm encouraging you, take down those numbers and call the prayer room. Alan. And we also would like to encourage all our viewing friends, if you have not yet shared that link, please do so now. Share the link. We want someone to hear the word. Last night was power packed. And we know Amen. that tonight the Holy Ghost will be in this place. So you have Amen. to share that link. Be the minister of the Amen. gospel. And also we encourage you to subscribe Subscribe to the different platforms that you have logged on um, and also like because oftentimes we, we have persons on the, the platform, but we want the message to go forth. It makes a difference if you like what you're seeing. So go ahead and, and press that like button right now on that YouTube page or that Facebook page right now. Do that. We want that like to go up so that the, you know, YouTube can realize and send it even further. Amen. That's right. Well, yes. we stand ready now to hear another droppings of the word from the throne of God through his manservant. So we pray that you will open your hearts so that the fragrance of heaven will bless every heart listening to the word tonight. We go right now Amen. to the anointed ones as they pave the way for the spoken word, the anointed ones. Was this made before I came along and it may not get better by the time I am gone but if I had to talk about what I It puts a smile on my heart, Lord, to sing about you. I want to do that one more time. See, the world was dismayed before I came along, and it may not get better. Sing through the 
puts a smile on my heart, Lord, just to sing about you. Cause I love, I love you, Jesus, and I love your name. It's been a long time. Thank you. I love you, Lord, and it makes me happy just to sing about you. Good evening, everyone. It is my joy to greet you this evening. I trust you had a wonderful day today. I hope that unlike me, you had some dumplings today, huh? Uh, welcome once again. Well, I never had any dumplings today, but I have some good news to share with you. Uh, today is the birthday of uh, my wonderful twins, but I do have some of the things to share with you. Yes, yes, yes. And I, they're going to kill me. You know, I planned, I, I, I planted in my head to show you uh, some pictures when they were tiny. Uh, and uh, I don't know how I could have left it on my desk just now running up here. Uh, but, but happy birthday, girls. You know, love you with all my heart. And um, faith and hope. You know, the names were not chosen by their parents. I, faith and hope was not my name. I chose... Glenica, Glenella, and Glenadine. Because you see, guys like Dr. Smith and uh, Alan and, uh, and Rose will tell you that if you don't have a son, you don't have a chance. They, they say that, that, that your name will die. And I wonder where they get that from. Because you see, 
uh, very soon all of Joseph goes to get married and the smith gone but whoever my girls marry they will still be Glenn whatever last name they chose you have to call them Glenn first and so I made sure I fixed that don't you know yes so a happy birthday to Glenadine and Glenica Glenn's all the way and uh, so, so they shouldn't have lived you know the doctors felt that they wouldn't survive and um, when, when, when they were born one was only a pound and a half after a long struggle they, I, I nearly I came pretty close to losing my mind I, I walked from the hospital on that February 9th and it was not until I heard the car blowing me out the road that I realized I have the car keys in my hand and I left the car at the hospital parking lot but oh how God has been good it's been a long journey but they are my sweetheart they are my joy my sunshine and I want to say happy birthday to my two little sunshines. Then I have some good news for you. Today also is my baby sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Debbie. Yes, I, I had planned to come look for you today, but the old man had too many things to do. Happy birthday to my pet sister and also my sister-in-law, Carla. Happy birthday to you. And then to, I, I can't forget this one one of my long-standing elders who served for years in Thornton, now residing in Toronto at age, I think she's now 91. Happy birthday, Mother Sohan. On behalf of all of your children, they're wishing you a wonderful God-blessed birthday. And then, the evangelism coordinator for the Belize Union. Today, also, only good people are born on February 9th. Huh? Today also is his birthday, uh, the Honorable Dr. David Campbell. And you want to know how he celebrated? He celebrated his birthday by baptizing five persons today. Would you say amen? What a way to celebrate. What a way to celebrate uh, your birthday. And so my friend and colleague, to you and your wife, happy birthday to you, to you and your family. Happy birthday, and uh, we want to wish you many more baptisms on every day in between your birthdays. And so to Marlon Peters from Barbados, he has decided to be baptized this coming Sabbath. Would you say amen? But I want to tell you also, today is the day of good news. That I, I, got, I got a text this morning. Well, I got many uh, texts this morning. But, but here, hear this one. One of the bars in which the screen was set up, the gentleman who set up the screen in his room bar will be getting baptized this coming Sabbath. Are you listening to me? Isn't God an amazing God? Isn't God wonderful? There, there were two shops. One is a bar. He's getting baptized this weekend. The other shopkeeper got baptized in the week. Are you listening to me? Oh, what an amazing God we serve. The everlasting gospel is being carried to the ends of the earth. And God is calling his children one by one and two by two. He's calling them from every place. Wouldn't it? I, I felt it was a strange idea that, that a screen would be set up right in the midst of J. Ray and all his nephews. But there's no place that the Holy Ghost can't go. Are you listening to me? There's no barrier that God can break down. If you are serious about serving God he'll make a way in the wilderness he'll make a way in the Red Sea he'll part your jaw now you listen to me all you've got to do is to say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way and if you're willing to trust and obey he will make a way are you listening to me oh I wish to God I could preach until December are you listening to me out there uh, hearts are responding all over the place lives are being transformed Someone called me today from, from the Cayman Islands and uh, Pastor Mary, please remind me, there, there's a husband, there's a, a gentleman and his daughter who want to be baptized this weekend. They've been watching and, and they've made their minds up. Oh, we praise the Lord God. There are folk all across Jamaica. There are folk, can I appeal to you? In, 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 uh, today we had some in Belize and, and I hope by God's grace we'll have many more in Trinidad. 
and Tobago and Suriname and Guyana in South America and, and uh, Berry Islands and Abaco and, and New Providence. Are you listening to me? And in the Cayman Islands, there's going to be a baptism this weekend in Cayman that I have to be a part of. I'll stay right here and do the pronouncement. I was the best man in his wedding and I'll be the best man by his baptism. Are you listening to me? Oh, the Lord God is having his way. Would you say amen? And we rejoice. We rejoice with those who are rejoicing. But I still have sadness in my heart because there are countless thousands who need to make that decision. There are countless thousands more who need to say, yes, Lord, yes. And I know my heart goes out. I, I spoke with a lady in the week. She's been living with this gentleman for 30 years. Heart is heavy. Oh, I understand. And I want to appeal to you, sir. What are you waiting for? I mean, you've gotten all the milk from the cow. Are you listening to me? You've gotten all the milk from the cow. What, what are you waiting for? I trust by the grace of God. You know, what would be wonderful if we could have a thousand weddings lined up for persons who have decided. Can I celebrate with you? I want to celebrate with you. I want to celebrate with you from Jamaica and Guyana and Barbados and Trinidad. If you're not yet married and you're living together, talk with the pastor. All you need is just a licensed or registered marriage officer. Talk with the pastor. Beloved, you, you just need two witnesses. You don't need any cow and goat and chicken for all the people them dress up in a white coat, eat off the whip. It's going to be a wonder. But that ain't a perfect wonder. They'll eat off your wedding cake and drink off your stuff and go back to the yard. Save your money. Are you listening to me? I've seen many, many fantastic wedding days. But sad marriages. It's better to have a simple wedding where you're loving each other and have a glorious marriage. Are you listening to me? Let it be by the grace of God that you'll make that decision. I want to look you in your eye and reason with you. You've come too far. You've been together for too long. You've been together for too long. God is anxious to to pull your life together in harmony with his will. Find the pastor. Find a Bible counselor. And ask them to come by and talk with you and help you make that issue right. So together you can be married and you can serve God. Are you listening to me? Stephen Murray and Kimberly Barrett will be baptized this coming Sabbath. Oh, they're coming in. The, the news is coming. This is, this is good news. Hot off the press. And we, we rejoice with you. By the grace of God, we trust that many others will come. Oh, that this weekend will be the biggest baptism ever. Are you listening to me? And I see some more. Kesley Ridge and Carrie Moore want to be baptized. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. What a wonderful sound the gospel brings, huh? It's good news for those who hear it and those who obey. It's not enough just to hear it. May God help you make your calling and election sure, would you say amen? And, and somebody called me today from, from, from all the way in New York City. She said, listen, I've been searching online for the lesson. And I, I want to do the lesson so I can be in the graduation. I prayed with her today. And I did promise her that I'll have somebody connect with her. And if you're listening, the old man got tied up today. He had a lot of stuff doing. But I'll make sure we have somebody reach out to you to make sure that you are in the graduation. And we look forward to an amazing graduation for those who will complete the healthy and happy Bible lesson. But now his goodness is running after you. you your hands are the sing because it's the, the, the shoes is uncomfortable. I won't tease my friend at the back tonight. He, he's wearing his rights. <laughs> if, if you see that don't come back, they're saying I can't bother with this preacher. Huh? No, no, I, I, I only have to be fair. What did I say to him? What did I, what did I say to him? Young girl, wear your size. <laughs> it's time to praise the Lord. Are you listening to me? Let's sing the song tonight as we testify 
of God's goodness. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. Yes. From the moments that I wake up Till I lay my head Until I lay my head I will sing I will sing Of the goodness of God So hold my life Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after Gracious Father, may goodness and mercy follow us tonight, but may the Holy Spirit sit down beside somebody in their living room, by the screen, wherever the screen is, across Jamaica, across the Atlantic Caribbean Union across the Caribbean Union, across all the countries in the Caribbean, all the countries of our world, wherever there is a smartphone opened up, connected with the word tonight, wherever there's a gadget, wherever there's a television screen, oh gracious God, may the Holy Spirit sit down beside that man, beside that lady, beside that boy, beside that girl may you have your way I'm only Isilda's boy I'm just a messenger boy push me aside tonight as you've always done and step forward and do your own thing for the glory of your name and the saving of our souls this is our prayer in Jesus name and let God's children say Amen our subject tonight can the love be true if the flowers are fake can the love be true if the roses you give me are a facade can the love be trusted if the flowers you present are fake. I, I have chosen the title because of the interpretation. Have you ever heard it said, give me genuine roses when I can see their beauty and smell their fragrance? Have you ever heard the phrase, give me the roses while I can smell them, while I can see their beauty? The phrase is intended to say, Show me genuine care while I am alive. Show me genuine affection while I can appreciate it. Show me that you're genuine. I may not go where you think I am going, but just to satisfy a decent Alan, I will just uh, uh, say, Is this love, is this love, is this love that I'm feeling? I want to know now. I want to. Yes, I'm done with you now. Huh? Is this love? Is it really love? And if, you, if you're from old school, if you if from old school, like I see David waving his finger. If you're from old school, you, you know that many songs have been written, young people, that, that, that betrays this facade. Well, and sometimes it's out on Heartbreak Avenue that they discover... That it was just empty words. He said he was sick, so I went to the show alone. 
I, I don't remember, <laughs> remember any of it. All I remember is that she said, you know. And then, dum, 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 this is right down in front of me. And just as the... I saw my darling and my best friend walked in. Oh, sad movies always make me cry. You know, the song is saying that uh, I'm done. You're just getting ready, but I'm done. Young people, uh, uh, the truth is that it's not just your generation, it's not just ancient generation, but people of every generation have been jilted sometimes looking for genuine stuff, looking for genuine affection. And because the world is filled with so many fake people, I, I, I feel a troublesome spirit now. Huh? Uh, well, I don't know his name, but he said, take time to know him. Take time to know her. It's not, it's not an overnight thing. Huh? Uh, and then they said, if you, if you found the genuine stuff, hold on tightly, because before you can count, one, two, three, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, are, are you listening to me? So, so on, on both sides of the coin, there, there's a struggle. There, there are those who have found genuine stuff and treat it with scant regard. I, I've gone to sit with folk who, who are having problems and, and sometimes my heart ache because there's nothing more that one party can do to show that it takes two hands to clap. Huh? And nothing is hurtful more than to know you're giving your all in a relationship and you're not getting anything in return. But that's for Sabbath coming. I'm going to leave that right there. Tonight, I want to take you to a text that bothers the mind of Jesus. It is similar in terms of the context of lip service, fake flowers, lack of genuine affection for God. The story comes up in Matthew chapter 15. Would you turn your Bibles with me? We're going there quickly. We have a little way to go tonight. So let's begin. We're starting at Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. It's a conversation with, with Jesus and church folk. You know, sometimes church folk give Jesus a hard time. I said sometimes church folk give Jesus a hard time. And Jesus is a genuine lover and you don't have to question if this is love that you're seeing. But, but sometimes church folk are, are, are practice a facade and so Jesus had a problem. In Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 1, then came the Jesus, scribes and who? Pharisees. Tell your neighbor, these are church people. Then came the Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem. Before I read the text, they came to him because they had a problem. What was their problem? Verse 2 said, they asked him a question. Why do your disciples transgress, watch this, watch this, transgress the tradition of the elders? So, so this is the crux of the matter. The problem that they had was not with disobedience to God's commandments, the problem that they had was that their tradition was not being followed. The problem that they had was that there were some honest people who rather follow the commandments of God than follow the doctrines of mankind. So, so these church folk, they were the church leaders, they came to Christ, they asked him, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders. It was a simple problem that they used to, because they failed to wash their hands before they eat bread. That's a good hygiene practice. But they are saying, we've made this an important tradition. 
It's funny how we take simple stuff and make them more important than the commandments of God. It's funny how sometimes church folk would rather follow simple tradition that have no basis in the word of God and yet glaringly disobey the commandments of God. And this was the problem in the text. How do I know that? Look at the answer. Look at the answer that Jesus gave. But he answered and said to them, Why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Now, what's your first? Jesus says here, there is a problem between the traditions of men and the commandment of God. And tonight, beloved, that's the crux of the matter. The issue is, they were offering worship, but their worship was just fake flowers. There was no genuine commitment to Almighty God. There was no genuine love for God and His commandments. And I want to help you understand something, but let me jump someplace with you, and I'll come back right here. Jump with me. To ju me, me no, let me not move from here right yet. So he said to them, Why do you, why do you transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? Can I talk to church folk tonight? Can I talk to Jen? Hear me. Christ is saying to us, when we put our traditions, regardless of how sanctified we make them, if they are not in the Bible, God says there's a problem between your tradition and his commandments. And this is the critical issue we face today. He said, why do you transgress the commandments of God? Why are you putting your traditions higher than the commandments of God? Why are you putting the doctrines of mankind above the commandments of God? Why are you paying more allegiance to man-made tradition than you are to the commandments of God? And he didn't stop there. He went on to say something else. Look at verse 7. He said, and by the way, by the way, verse 4 would remove the doubts in your mind. He is talking about the Ten Commandments. When he said, you are transgressing the commandments of God by your tradition, he went on to quote one of the Ten Commandments. He said, the commandment says, honor your father and your mother. So it's clearly established that he's saying, when you place man made teachings above the commandments of God when you take the traditions of men above God's commandments God has a problem with it that's fake flowers there's no genuine love is manifested in genuine obedience to God what did Jesus say did he not say in John 14 15 if you love me keep my commandments if you don't love him you'll present fake flowers if you do love him you'll present genuine obedience he went on to say and Jesus was my kind of preacher he would hit the nail right on the H-E-A-D. He said in verse 7, You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, This people draweth nigh to me with their mouth, honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. He said, listen, lip service, fake flowers, there's no genuine obedience to my commandments. This people draw near to me with their lips, honor me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. Every wife will tell you, every girlfriend will tell you, it doesn't matter how much money you give, if the heart is not in the relationship, it won't work. 
There are many husbands who make the mistake that as, as long as there is food in the house and a car to drive and, and all the comfort, a flat screen TV in every room, wall to wall carpet from house to house, but you all you have is untelevised colored catastrophe and wall to wall confusion. Are you listening to me? The fridge is full of food, but the heart is empty of love. Jesus said in the next verse, he said, but in vain do you worship me when you teach for doctrines that which has no basis in the Bible. This is strong language. I want you to hear the word tonight. He said, and he's quoting from Isaiah, Christ was a Bible-believing preacher. He found the text and he said, this people draw nigh to me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I've heard folks say, Pastor, I love the Lord. Pastor, I, I, I love the preaching. Pastor, I love what I'm hearing. That's only empty words. Real love is demonstrated in your obedience to what the word of God says. God needs more than just your agreement. He needs your surrender. It's not enough to say, I believe the Bible. The devil also believes. And more than that, the word of God says the devil believes and he trembles. He knows the word of God is true. He knows the day of judgment is coming. He knows that the word says he shall be destroyed. And listen to me carefully. The word of God says repent and be baptized. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That if you believe you should not perish. The truth is if you don't believe and act on that you will perish. There's no salvation in church membership. There's no salvation in simply being a church member. You could be an Adventist or an Anglican, a Baptist or a Methodist, a Pentecostal or Jehovah's Witnesses, a Catholic. There's no salvation in simply being a church member. We've got to follow the word of God. We speak to nations. Hear the word of God. We speak to islands and continents. Hear ye the word of God. We speak to those in church and those out church. The judgment of God is hastening greatly and there'll be no place to hide. He sends the everlasting gospel. Hear me, sir. Wherever you are tonight, in America or Canada or Africa or Asia, hear me tonight. The word of God comes to you right now. God needs more than just fake flowers. He needs more than just empty words. He needs your surrender. He needs your genuine love. And the only way that that is demonstrated is in your willingness to trust and obey. To do what God says no matter what. That's why Luther said when they asked him to recant. When he said the just shall live by faith. When he saw the tradition of the Pope and the Bishop and he saw what God's word said and they asked him to recant, he said, it is neither right nor safe for a man to sin against his conscience. He said, I can't do that, so help me God, here I stand. And he wrote something to help buttress your faith. He wrote, a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Hear the word of God tonight. If you need the power of the Holy Ghost, God sends you that. You need a word, he sends you that. But he gives you ears to hear and a mind to understand. And I said tonight, if the gifts are fake, if the flowers is fake, then the love is not genuine. If the flowers are fake, if the gifts are fake, you've got to go back and visit Mary. She spent a whole year's wage on a box of ointment because her love for Jesus was genuine. And when they said this money could have been better spent, Jesus said, leave her alone. Are you listening to me? She didn't think it too costly. 
because she felt that Jesus was worth every sacrifice and any sacrifice he could, she could make. Are you listening to me? That's why Ridley and Latimer, when the church ordered them to be killed and tied them up at the stake, they could have recanted. They could have abandoned their faith. But they decided it's better to die for Jesus than to live for the devil. They decided it's better to die in obedience to the word of God than to live in man's tradition. If the flowers are fake, the love is not genuine. I want to help you understand how much you love him. Your action will show. Listen to me tonight. The word of God comes to you. And I feel a provoking spirit. There are those of us inside God's remnant church who play hopscotch. We take the name of the Lord God in vain. We play hopscotch. We can't even share the link. We can't even make the time to go visit a neighbor. We can't even make a sacrifice to help somebody. We are too busy trying to make a living. Too busy in pleasure and sin that we forget how God wants us to live. These people draw near to me with their lips, honor me with their mouth. We must understand there is no salvation in simply being a church member. There's no salvation in simply being religious. We are too close to the coming of Jesus. He's asking for heart surrender. He's asking for full commitment. He's asking for non-negotiable commitment. It's time to be fully sold out for the Lord God. Are you listening to me? A long time ago, I hear Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and let him follow me. Well, what does it mean to deny yourself? There are some stuff I love to do but because I love Jesus more I can't do them there are some places I love to go but because I love Jesus I can't go there anymore there are some things I love to do but I can't do them anymore things are different now something happened to me since my heart is surrendered hallelujah to the Lord God fake flowers is a demonstration of lack of genuine love fake flowers empty formalism empty words we put the tradition of men above the word of God and there are some folk tonight you better start thinking told you last night beloved God never changed the Sabbath told you Christ never did I told you who did but tonight some folk would rather have the doctrines of a church than the word of the living God Jesus said this people draw nigh to me with their mouth honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me when God has your heart, he has your life. When God has your heart, when the heart is surrendered, whatever you've got to let go, you will let it go when your heart is surrendered. When your heart is surrendered, when your heart is wrapped tight in love with God, you will leave the sinful world and its stuff behind. You'll say all to Jesus, I surrender all to him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. But there's a problem in the text. The text didn't say that they weren't worshiping. The text never said they weren't offering flowers. The text never said they weren't saying, Lord, Lord. But the text gives a conclusion to fake flowers. The text gives a conclusion when the heart is not with God. But in vain do they worship me. What a statement. If I should tell you you're worshiping in vain, you'd have a problem with me. A Jesus Cesar. Jesus says and you can't miss the context in which he said it he said when you put the traditions of men above the commandments of God 
you are worshiping in vain. That's what the text says. But you know, he quoted from Isaiah. And I should take you to the text he quoted. Come with me to Isaiah chapter 29. I told you I love Isaiah. Jesus loved Isaiah. He preached from Isaiah more than any other old text. Isaiah 29. Let, let me follow Jesus tonight. So let me take you to the text he quoted from. And you should know when Christ was here, there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All he had was from Genesis to Malachi. So Isaiah chapter 29. I'm looking in my own Bible. I wouldn't even look on the screen, huh? I'm looking in my own Bible. Isaiah 29, 29 and verse 13 says, hear what it says here. It says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and their lips do honor me but have removed their heart far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men Jesus said this people draw near to me with their lips but their heart is far and their fear towards me is not taught by my word, but it is taught by the precepts of men. The text isn't done. <clears throat> Jump with me. That was 29 and verse 13. Are you listening to me? So, so let me read, let me read verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. The wisdom of their wise men shall perish. I hear folk when they hear God's commandments, when they hear God's truth, they say, but, but, but pastor, I, I, reverend so-and-so said, and priest so-and-so said, and bishop so-and-so said, so they put some wise ones above the plain, thus saith the Lord God. I'm not done. I'm not done. Jump over to chapter 30 of Isaiah, the 30th chapter, and the ninth verse. He said, well, let me read from verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table, note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever, that this people is a rebellious people, lying children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Do you want it any plainer? God says they are rebellious because they will not hear the law of the Lord. Hear what he says. Hear what he said. Hear what he says in, in, in verse 10. Which say to the prophets, the seers, see not. To the prophets, prophesy not to us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Do you hear the word of God? He says that there are folk who would rather have smooth doctrines. But bless the Lord God, the only word that will save you is the word that will prick your conscience and worry your mind and shake up your life. The only word that will help you is the word that will confront you and God will say, listen, it's time to straighten out. Straighten out before the judgment of God come. We need a straight word for a crooked generation. We need a strong word for a weak generation. We need a plain verse set the Lord God for a devil filled generation hear the word ye nations of earth hear the word oh fallen rebellious world hear the everlasting gospel can I talk to those in church these are no days for smooth doctrines these are no days for weak word the church
church need a straight word for if the word of God does not come straight there are some young folk and old folk who will go straight to hell right being in church there's no salt hallelujah God need to send a word that will shake up the church we need an earthquake in the church to shake up the church are you listening to me the word of God will not go to sleep you may burn down the church and burn down the Bible you may pass your laws to make it illegal I know sometimes when we preach God's word there are courtrooms who will classify it as hate speeches well let me tell you something I'm a Bible believing child of God and the God whom I serve in the Garden of Eden he made the seventh day Sabbath as a mark of his creatorship that the world may know there's only one true and living God and he's the only one who can make something from nothing the Sabbath says that God is sovereign creator but there's something else the same way the devil hates the Sabbath the same way the devil hates marriage God intended that a marriage should be between a man and a woman that's God's design and I don't care what the world says I'll preach what the word of the living God says are you listening to me hear the word of God tonight it's fashionable and I saw on my TV screen a bishop female being married to another bishop female. The word of God calls it abomination. You may say I'm preaching hate crime, but it's time for the world to hear the plain verse, said the Lord God. Are you listening to me? We have no hate towards anybody. Our hatred is for sin. Our hatred is for disobedience. Our hatred is for the doctrines of mankind. But God said it's time now for the world to hear a straightforward gospel. If the flowers is fake, the love is not genuine. Are you listening to me? When the heart is genuine, everything else will be right. Hear the word of God tonight. And Jeremiah has a word to buttress the word of Isaiah. Jeremiah, what do you have to say to a world like this? A world that can't last much longer. Jeremiah, what word do you have for a world like this? He said, Samuels, read the sixth chapter. Read what I said in the 16th verse. Thus said the Lord, stand in the ways and see ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls give me the commandments of God there's nothing wrong with it give me the seventh day Sabbath there's nothing wrong with it give me baptism by immersion there's nothing wrong with it give me clean eating and clean dressing and clean living there's nothing wrong with it give me a marriage between a man and a woman there's nothing wrong with it I still believe so he said thus said the Lord God stand in the ways there are voices here and voices there multiple voices young people calling and, and, and listen to me the world is so wrong side up that there are young people who can't see the right side of a wrong side of world and God sometimes have to stand upside down to get us to look right side up are you listening to me well he'll set the world straight he'll send a straight word hear it if you want to be saved he said stand in the ways ask for the old path seek for the good way you shall find rest to your souls but the last line in the 16th verse said but they said we will not walk therein they draw near with their lips but their heart is far from God. 
Genuine love for God must result in genuine obedience to the commandments of God. Genuine love for the sacrifice of Jesus must result in repentance and baptism in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Genuine love for God will result in a life surrendered. We are weak, but he's strong. There's power in his name. The Bible said, I set watchmen over you. I tell you, listen to the word, but you said we won't listen. He said, therefore, hear ye nations. We speak to nations from this platform. God says, hear ye nations. Hear, O earth. Behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened to my words, nor to my law, but they have rejected it. God says they give me empty words, fake flowers, but no genuine surrender, no genuine obedience, no genuine love. And Jeremiah makes it clear. He said in Jeremiah chapter 5, 30 and 31, a wonderful, a horrible thing is committed in the land. What is it, prophet? Hear the word. He said, the prophets prophesy falsely. And the priests be ruled by their own means. And my people love to have it so. God says there are preachers telling lies. And people would rather have the lie of a preacher than the truth of the word of God. He said there are prophets speaking their own stuff. But people would rather have the words and traditions of men than the doctrines of God. You say that's Old Testament, mm -hmm. but all scripture is given by God's inspiration. But let me take you then to where you are comfortable. Let me take you to Matthew. Matthew, well, before I go to Matthew, Luke has something from the lips of Jesus. So let me take you to Luke. Since you're not comfortable in the Old Testament, let me take you where you're comfortable and show you that all scripture calls us to obey the word of God. So Luke chapter 6, St. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. Can I read it for you? It says, and why call you me Lord, Lord and do not do the things which I tell you. Why are you calling me Lord? Why go to church if your objective is not to surrender to the will of God? Why are you calling me? And then he would tell a, a story to buttress the point. He said, whoever comes after me, hear my words and do with them. I will show you to whom he is like. He's like a man which built a house, dig deep, lay the foundation on a rock. And when the flood come and the stream beats vehemently upon the house, it could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. He said, if you hear my word and you do what I tell you, I'll tell you what you're like. You've got to dig deep. Dig deep in the word of God. Lay the foundation of your life on God's word. Because the storms will come and the floods will come. But you can say with great confidence on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. But he says, if you hear my word and you fail to trust and obey. If you hear my word. And you fail to do what I tell you. Like a man who built his house. 
There's no foundation. He just built it on the sand. And the floods of life come. The storms of life come. Cancer come. COVID comes. Economic disaster comes. But he's got nothing to stand on. There's nothing on the inside that holds the reins. And so he courts suicidal ideation. He commits suicide. He becomes depressed and distressed because he has no foundation. Listen to me tonight. The times to which we have come, you're going to need more than money. You're going to need more than the companionship of men or women. You're going to need more than a good job. You're going, all these are wonderful. But listen to me carefully. When the ambulance rushes you off to the emergency room and the doctors have you on that operating table, sometimes even their best intellect falls short. In a crisis, the floods coming, the wind blowing, and the machine beep, 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 and you hear your life beeping away. And all the money you have, all the friends you have, all the good looks you have, all the masculine prowess you have dissipates into insignificant nothingness because you don't have any rock on which to stand. Can I close tonight? And Matthew, Matthew tells us, not of a day when COVID death will come to your door, not of a day when, when prostate cancer, cervical cancer, not of a day like that, but the day of days, Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 21, not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he, he that doeth the will of my Father. Are you doing God's will tonight? You've heard it for the past. Three and a half weeks. You've heard about the grace of God. You've heard about the blood of Jesus. That it cleanses from all sin. You've heard about the forgiving heart of God. You've heard the call of Isaiah. Come now. Let's reason together. You've heard the call to come back. Backslider. You've heard the call to surrender sir. Ladies and gentlemen. You've heard the call. The word of God says, Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Because many, many, many will say to me, In that day, when the skies shall roll asunder, in that day, when the earth shall shake, in that day when the marketplaces shall be empty and the boardrooms are shut down and the banks are closed down. In that day when the gambling dens are shut down. In that day when every house of prostitution and pleasure is shut down. In that day when the top bands are shut down and the music is silent. In that day. When you stand at the judgment bar of God, hear me, sir, whether you believe in God, yes or no, there is still a living God. In that day, in that day, in that day, when the preaching of the gospel will be over and done, in that day, many will say to me, Lord, we have preached in your name. We've prophesied in your name. We've cast out devils in your name. We've done many wonderful works in your name. We've had Easter celebrations in your name. We've had holy days in your name. 
We've had traditions established in your name. We've had man-made Sabbaths in your name. We've had Easter eggs and bunny rabbits celebrating your, your resurrection in your... Then I will say to them, depart from me, workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Fake flowers. Fake flowers. No genuine love. Jesus said, I've shown you that while you were yet sinners, I died for the ungodly. I've shown you when you couldn't be bothered with yourself, I came down to your level to lift you up. I call you, but you refuse. Send the Holy Ghost to convict your heart, but you slam the door shut in his face. In that day, no more baptism. In that day, no more call. But tonight, you still have a chance. Tonight, the story is told of a great chess picture. The world's great chess player had a religious conviction and he wanted to paint a picture of the devil cornering the sinner, leaving the sinner with no hope. He paints the picture that the sinner had gone beyond the boundary, that God couldn't reach him. And the story said that the picture hung there for years and many would come and look at it with amazement. But one day here come this old chess player and while they were looking at all the exhibits, he stood there at this one picture and he wouldn't move. The crowd passed him and he saw the young man uh, being checkmated and he said, there, there's something wrong here. And he kept on gazing, he kept on gazing, he kept on gazing and the crowd heard him scream out, you still have a move, you have one more move. And I say tonight to a sinner, you've got one more move, you've got one more move. It's guaranteed by the blood of, of Jesus Christ. I don't care what the devil in hell has done to you. Hear me, young man. You may have committed a hundred murders. Hear me, drug pusher. The devil may tell you, you're done for. But the blood of Jesus Christ tonight speaks hope. The blood speaks deliverance. The blood speaks victory. The blood says you still have one more move. You still have one more move. You still have one more move. This weekend, make the right move. Make the move for surrender. Make the move for baptism. This weekend, go further than giving fake flowers. Say, Jesus, I give you my heart. I give you my heart. I don't just want you to be almost persuaded. There are folk tonight who have been watching for the last three weeks. You are almost persuaded. But hear the preacher. To be almost persuaded is to be altogether lost. Listen to me tonight. You still have one more move. Hear the voice that entreats you. Backslider, you once walked with God. This weekend is your baptism. Hear the voice that entreats you. Oh, return ye unto God. You still have one more move. You still have one more move. The voice of God is calling you. Don't be like Agrippa, almost persuaded. Almost cannot avail. Almost is but to fail. And if you don't make the move, then sad, sad will be the bitter wail. Lost because of fake flowers. Lost because of lip service. Lost because there was no genuine love. No genuine surrender. 
to the Lord God. Can you see him carrying your cross? But you know before he carried the cross, I'm going to take you to where he prayed a prayer that you and I must practice praying every day. He's in Gethsemane now. The weight of the world on his shoulder. As the son of God, he could see the tyranny of Calvary. And he goes to his knees. He said, Father, if there's another way for me to save the world, then give me that way. He said, my heart is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's Jesus praying. He's in human flesh. He's got to face it like one of us. And he prayed the only prayer that you need to pray. He said, nevertheless, nevertheless, I don't want to go to Calvary, but nevertheless, if there's no other way to save the world, I'll go to Calvary. I'll go. I'll go. I'll bear sin's death. I'll pay the price so the drunkard can find sobering power. I'll pay the price so the priest who for years have been steeped in the doctrines of men can gain victory to obey the commandments of God. I'll pay the price that a youngster, a slave to drugs and a slave to sex and a slave to violence can find victory. I'll pay the price. Nevertheless, not my will thine be done that's not lip service that's not fake flowers thy will be done I hear Habakkuk say although the fig tree shall not blossom and there's no labor in the field I see no food but I'll stand on my watch can I put that in 21st century language can I put that in modern day language I know I may lose my job if I get baptized I know I may lose my friends if I keep the Sabbath although I will lose my friends although I will lose my job although I will lose earth dearest time I'll stand on my watch I'll surrender I'll say yes Lord yes to your will and to your way I'll say yes Lord yes I will trust you and obey for when the Holy Ghost speaks with my whole heart I'll agree it's not fake flowers it's not lip service take my heart oh God and seal it seal it seal it seal it God is looking for true worshipers God is looking for genuine love God is looking, hear me reverend, hear me bishop, hear me pastor, hear me mister, hear me sister. God is looking for you. He's looking for you. This is no time to be almost persuaded. This is time to stand on the rock and let the chips fall where they may. This is time to say, take the world, but give me Jesus. All his joys are but a name, but his love and his word abideth ever. Make that decision tonight. You can be married tomorrow. Find the registrar. Find the ref. Find your way back to God. Are you listening to me? Make that decision. Hear me backslider. Don't drift any further. Hear me young man. Hear me young lady. You've been playing hopscotch for too long. It's time to come back. The judgment of God is about to fall. He does not want lip service. He wants heart surrender. I'm done. I'm done. Yes. What a song. On tongue or pen. Can't ever tell. 
hallelujah for the love of God tonight if you feel broken if you feel wretched if you feel helpless if you feel distressed and depressed the love of God is reaching down to you right where you are yes bow down with care I see the night oh thank you thank you Jesus Trudy and Smith is ready for baptism Nikki Rose ready for baptism Kenneth Atkinson ready for baptism Charlene Williams ready Kessler Ridge ready Kerry Moore ready I wish to God that a hundred thousand across the world tonight would say Lord I'm ready I'm ready I wish to God tonight and you'll say I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready than tongue or pain make that decision tonight click on that QR code fill out that card tonight tell God you don't want to die as a backslider tell the Lord God you will not die and go to a hopeless grave Tell God tonight that Adam and Eve bowed down with care, but God sent His Son. He gave His Son to win, to win you back, to win your victory, to win life eternal. He's our in child to reconcile and pardon from His sin. I'm done. Make that decision tonight. Whether you are in Waterworks or Orange Bay. Or, or, or cave wherever you are tonight in Spanish town in Almond town in Portland town in St. Thomas in St. Anne in Trelawney in St. Mary wherever you are tonight make that decision it's more than lip service it's time for heart surrender it's time for change lives make that decision by the grace of God tonight Shall still and you oh yes all metalless and strong for Adam's race hallelujah hallelujah make that decision tonight choose baptism tonight choose surrender the love of God comes your way this coming Saturday is your baptism and if you have anybody in your family tell them let's go together let's go together to be baptized tell your daughter tell your son tell your husband tell your wife find whoever is in your house and say listen let's go together no more lip service no more fake flowers let's go together could we with ink the ocean fill and were the sky of parchment made were every stock on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade to write the love of God on high would train the ocean dry thank God tonight yes a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would train the ocean From sky, from sky to sky. Oh, sing it one more time. Oh, love of God. Oh, love of God. Yes, sir. You need not be lost tonight. Hallelujah. There's power in the blood. There's salvation. There's redemption for every sinner. It shall forever. Saints and angels. Oh, sing it one more time. Could we with ink, could we with ink the ocean fill? How rich and poor, how measureless and strong. No more fake flowers, no more fake relationship. Genuine love, genuine surrender, genuine obedience to the word of the living God. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. We gotta sing it one more time. 
Yes. The ocean fields. Oh, hallelujah. Where the, where the sky, sky of parchment lay. Where every star. Where every star. On earth like a pen. On earth a queen. And every man. And every man. A scribe man, by trade. A scribe by trade. To write the love to of God above. Would train the ocean dry. Oh, hallelujah. Contain the whole Surrender Is calling you tonight Your baptism in this weekend Your baptism We speak to nations We give to nations The call of repentance We give to nations The call to surrender The call to obey The call to come back to God we give to nations that call tonight, obey the Bible, the judgments of God that are about to fall. We give the call to nations tonight. I'm done. I'm done. How measureless. How measureless and strong. Shall forever. I leave one last word to you tonight there's nothing that you're struggling with that God can give you victory over there's no mountain you have to climb to make heaven your home that God can't help you climb over there's no Red Sea too wide but the part of God can make a way even in your wilderness. This coming Saturday must be your baptism. Thousands of you across the Caribbean, across the continent, in England, in Africa, in Australia, in Kuwait, wherever you're watching from tonight, in India and China, the Lord God calls you. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, our world is filled with fake people, fake flowers, fake emotions, fake love, fake Christian service. You have said in vain we do worship when we teach for doctrines the commandments of men. You have said, God, it is vain to draw near to you with lip service only, but our hearts are far from you. We're too close to your coming to offer you fake flowers. We're too close to your coming to offer you empty formalism. Tonight, God, we don't just want to hear your word. We want to do your word. We want to do your will. But we cannot do until we are first surrendered to Jesus. And so tonight, Lord, we say with the songwriter, all to Jesus I surrender. Won't you accept that young man by the street side tonight watching on the screen? Won't you accept that young man God watching on his smartphone? Won't you accept that young lady tears are streaming down her face right now? She's heartbroken. She's distressed. She's tried everything, God, but now she's saying she wants to give you her all. Won't you accept, God, that former member who has drifted and has become a slave to liquor, a slave to stuff, but tonight they're saying, I surrender, I surrender. 
God, won't you accept that businessman? He's never been baptized before. He's never surrendered before. But tonight he's saying, God, I'm hearing this word and the word is mine. I just want to give. I don't want to give lip service. I want to give my heart to Jesus. Rescue them. Rescue them, Jesus. And on this coming Saturday, May there be a great rejoicing. There'll be baptisms by the river. There'll be baptisms by the sea. There'll be baptism in the pool. Wherever there's water enough. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. But bring out many more. Let the Holy Ghost gain the victory. For the glory of your name. And the saving of our souls is our prayer in Jesus' name. And let God's children say, Amen. May the living God be with you. And whatever you do, give him your heart in genuine surrender. I'll see you on Friday night. Amen, amen, amen indeed. What a word tonight. And I tell you, choose God. Choose God. Don't put anything else before him. Choose God. Indeed, Denise and Nicole. Before I pull you in, Nicole, I just want to say this. This is where we use this opportunity to send heaven a text message. So right now, you've heard the word. It's a beautiful word from God tonight. And I am asking all those with their smart device. And even if you don't have, you might be listening to the radio, but you can whisper this in your heart to the Lord. The word is, take my heart, O God. Amen. Text that to heaven Amen. and believe that he will fix it for you. Yes. Nicole. Amen. I'm not going to preach again. The sermon was powerful enough. I just want to remind my friends they know who they are. They know where they are. I've got friends around the region who are looking. I've got friends here at home in Grenada who are looking. I've got friends in the, in the diaspora who are looking. And I just want to remind them of what the preacher said. He said that to be almost persuaded is to be completely lost. And I want to remind them also, you've got one last move. Don't let the devil think that he can call checkmate on you. You've got one last move. Yes. Make that move for God tonight. Yes. It's not enough to just be a church member. Salvation does not come by just being a church member. Salvation comes through complete surrender to God. And tonight, I'm just encouraging you. I'm just asking you, surrender, yes. surrender. Amen. You won't regret it. Awesome. Surrender. That's the word. God bless you. Amen. God bless you too, Nicole. So it was a privilege and a pleasure to have you with us this evening. And we look forward to see so mine. many souls on the Grenada side giving their hearts to Jesus yes. this coming Sabbath. Amen. There we go. Amen. Well, Denise, and to everybody, it's nice. But guess what? We have to draw the curtain right here. Remember, tomorrow evening is rest night. We will come back here on Friday evening. What time, Denise? 6.30. Miami time. All right. So on behalf of the entire production and technical team, we just want to wish you a happy and a good night. Until Friday evening, stay safe. Good night. It's time to celebrate a healthy and a happier you in 2022. You are cordially invited to a historic graduation ceremony for all those who completed the Healthy and Happy Study Series on February 13th, 6 p.m. Miami time. Our special guest speaker will be Dr. Ellie Henry, President of the Inter-American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Make it a date to be part of this first ever regional ceremony by completing the lessons with your family and friends today. The Healthy and Happy Study Series Graduation Ceremony, proudly sponsored by Hope Beyond in conjunction with the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus online series.
consumption.